take the chance to tell everybody the, the motivation behind this. My Topo has been partnered for many years, coming on two decades with the United States Adventure Racing Association. And for those of you not familiar with Adventure Racers, they are a wild, crazy group of incredible athletes who um, do events that are self-propelled, biking, canoeing, paddling, uh, trail running. Uh, they race. They race through the night and through to a series of checkpoints uh, in teams of four, and uh, the events are held all over the all over the country. It started probably early 2000s. We started getting involved in it, but anyways, we love adventure racers. They're incredible athletes. We uh, they they go out for four straight days, ten straight days. We've seen them. Um, and with nothing but a map and compass and navigate to these checkpoints through unbelievable terrain and incredible teamwork and athleticism. Um, so kudos to all of you who have done it. Those of you who have not, um, it's, it's an amazing sport. So um, pay attention to adventure racing in the future. It's a really cool thing. Um, this webinar will give will cover the basics of how to make a navigation related, um, a navigation map, a map for a navigation event. Um, we will teach you how to how to how to make the map and then how to get it printed. Um, if you've got any questions, again, use the chat session. Um, and with that, let me introduce uh, Doug ArmConnect. His, uh, despite the consonant to vowel ratio in his name, it's just pronounced ArmConnect. And Doug's been with us for 15 or so years and knows everything about uh, maps that 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 I've ever asked him. So uh, I'm sure we're set for a good webinar today. Thank you, Doug. All right. Thanks so much, Paige, and welcome everybody. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. And we're pretty excited about today's presentation because um, this is bringing together adventure racing, which I've been doing all of my years with MyTopo and Terrain Navigator Pro, and then uh, the software Terrain Navigator Pro, which is going to allow you to customize your maps just the way that you want. Now, I know that I've worked with some of you before on MyTopo maps and customizations, and a lot of times that's been frustrating because uh, probably for both of us because it, the customization level was not really that great. And then we had to kind of go back and forth and change things. So the great thing about Terrain Navigator Pro is that you'll be able to customize your map, set it up on your screen, on your own system, on your own time, get everything set up just the way you want, and then send it to my topo and we'll print the maps off on our waterproof paper. And you'll have a great set of adventure racing maps. So today I'm just going to go over the basics of Terrain Navigator Pro from an adventure racing and uh, orienteering perspective. So uh, we have other webinars that cover a lot of these topics in more detail, and I would encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and check those out. But uh, today I'm going to give you just kind of an overview from what you might need to do on Terrain Navigator Pro. So here's kind of a quick topic list of what we're going to go over. Um, first of all, getting to your location and setting up a project. Then placing markers. Markers will be one of the main things you might want to have on your map for customization. So placing those, modifying, customizing what they look like. Then we'll look also look at coordinate systems and how to manually input coordinates if you want to do that for your maps. Take a look at a few different layer options and then a few other map elements like drawing routes, polygons and labels, doing elevation profiles. And finally, once you have your map set up, um, the overlay set up, doing your map layout, and then printing and exporting it so you can send it to my topo so we can print it for you. So let's go ahead and get started and switch over to Terrain Navigator Pro. Um, now, if you do not have Terrain Navigator Pro yet, you can go to the website terrainnavigator.com and download it. I believe it's a seven day free trial. So you can just um, give it a try and make sure it will work for you. I think hopefully once you see Terrain Navigator Pro, how powerful it is and how useful it can be for you, uh, you'll want to get the software if you don't have it already. All right, so once you bring up Terrain Navigator Pro, and by the way, as I'm talking here, feel free to put something into the chat window question. I'll pause periodically and take a look at the questions and try to answer them as best I can. Hey, Doug, this is Ed. Um, yes. I'm not seeing your presentation. I'm not sure if it's being presented to everyone. Oh, okay. Um, it looked like somebody else had maybe started a presentation and... Yes. 
I think that kicked me off. So one moment. Okay. All right, we'll see if the Terrain Navigator map, Pro map shows up now. It's now viewing on my screen. I hope it is viewing for everyone else. If you're having technical issues, just uh, go ahead and put something in the chat. Yep. All right, hopefully everybody can see it now. So now we're on to Terrain Navigator Pro. Once you bring it up, uh, it's going to take you probably to the last location that you, you stopped at, or in any case, you've got a map on the screen. If it's a place where you want to start your customizations, great. If not, you'll probably want to find a location. And to do that, you go to the Find menu in the top left corner. And you can search by different uh, street address, city, town, or so on. But you can just go to Search All Place Names. And I want to look for Tuttle Creek Lake in Kansas. Search for Tuttle Creek. And it shows different search uh, results here. We want to go to Tuttle Creek Lake, the reservoir. So I'll click on that and replace active to replace this map with the Tuttle Creek Lake map. All right, so it's gonna bring up your search location. It brings up a little red circle to show you where it's centered on now. If you don't like that there, just click on it and it goes away. Okay, this is the main map viewing screen. We've got our tools up here and by default, you're on this little hand icon to pan around. So Click and drag the map, pan around, look at where you're at. You can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And you can also use the plus and minus signs here to find the location that you want to look at. OK, so let's just kind of zoom in on this location. And you'll notice also that as I pan around and, and zoom around, in this part of the screen right here, to the right of the toolbar, it shows your coordinates. So as I'm moving my mouse around, those coordinates are changing. So I want to cover coordinate systems just real quick. So um, we'll deal with it more in detail later um, as far as markers go. But I just want to show you how to set up the coordinate system because you'll probably want to be in latitude longitude or UTM. It really just depends on how your race is set up. But once you set your coordinate system up, that's how your map uh, prints will come out. So you want to make sure that's set up correctly. So go to the File menu and go to Preferences. Go to Coordinates. And the primary coordinate display is what's going to show up here and what will show up on your final map. So right now we're in decimal degrees. You can do degrees, minutes, and seconds, degrees and minutes, UTM, or a whole bunch of others. So change it to whatever you want. And the datum by default is NAD27. Just be aware of that. In many cases, you'll probably want to change to NAT83 or WGS84. Once you have your coordinate system set up here, click on Close. And you can see up here now it changed to that coordinate system. OK, the next thing you want to do after you found the location is set up the project. And a project is just a way of storing all your overlays, all your annotations into a, just a certain named project. So I go under the Layers menu, go to Manage Projects. You can have any number of projects here. Um, but like for an adventure race, you'll want to create a new project, store everything in there. And if you did a different adventure race, you'd have a second project, and so on. So I'm going to go to here and go to New. OK, and you can select to keep it just on the PC. Or if you're going to use the Terrain Navigator Pro mobile app, you might want to share it with that. So I'll select that for now. And then you want I want to just synchronize with a new mobile project. OK. Type in the name, Tuttle Creek, Tuttle Creek Lake Adventure Race. And finish. OK, so this one is currently activated. To activate a different project, you just click on it, click on Activate. And you'll notice now that at the top of my screen in the title bar shows Tuttle Creek Lake Adventure Race. That's the project that I'm on. All right, so here's our map. We've got our coordinates. We've got our project set up. Um, let's see. Let me just take a quick look, see if we have any questions yet. OK, there's a question about hashing out areas such as off-limits zones. That's actually something we'll deal with in just a bit. 
And also a question about loading maps and routes, waypoints onto the Garmin devices. That is possible. Um, we'll go ahead and deal, show you how to do the overlays first, and then um, we'll take a look at um, exporting and things like that. OK. So the first overlay that we want to take a look at is the marker. And it shows it's symbolized by a little triangle right here. So you want to click on that to select it. And then to place a marker onto the screen, you just click on the location where you want it to be at. So click in different, different areas, and it will set up different waypoints. If you want to move a certain marker, just move your mouse over it or your cursor. It changes to a hand, then you click and drag it, move it to where you want it to go. And if, for example, you don't want one here, if you want to just delete it, right click on it, go to delete, hit confirmation, and it's gone. OK. So when you place a marker, it comes up with a default um, symbol, which may be a little different than this. I've already changed this and customized it. But in any case, you'll probably want to change how this looks. So just right click on it, go into Edit Marker. So you can change the name of the marker right here. And it changes it on your map. You can change the font and the text color if you would like. And the symbol, you can see there are a large number of symbols here. So you can play around with those and get the symbol that you want. You can change the size right here, smaller, larger. And you can change the color. So in this case, I've changed this to a blue circle. All right, so that's kind of the basics of, of putting those there. For uh, points like this, you might use these for things like checkpoints, transition areas. Even if you wanted to mark out, let's say a road was closed or something to that effect, um, you know, we could put a marker here, go in and edit the marker. Let's change the symbol to something like this. Make it nice and big. And make it red. And we could even call this something like you know, road closed and show it there that way. So there are a lot of different options with these markers and a lot of things you can do with them. I want to show you something about Terrain Navigator Pro that's not specific to markers right now. Um, clearly, with any, uh, this is just in the markers, just one tool, and there are a lot of options here. Terrain Navigator Pro is really powerful which is one of the things that makes it great for adventure racing and a lot of other types of mapping. Um, but it can get a little overwhelming. So if you click on the Help menu on any of these, really any screen that you're on, it has a really extensive help system. So every single thing on here it tells you in detail what that does and how it affects your map. So I would encourage you to make use of the help system. Go to the table of contents here find information about you know, everything you would want to know about markers, routes, tracks, every aspect of the program. So don't be too overwhelmed, but know that there are a whole lot of options in Terrain Navigator Pro, and you want to take some time to explore those. OK, something else I want to show you about markers is that a lot of times you will want to add a marker based on your latitude longitude or your coordinates. So if you have a marker or a series of markers that you know the coordinates for and you want to put them on the map, that's how you do that. So you go to the Edit Marker page, click on New. You can type in the name for your marker and put in the coordinates here. So we'll just put in these coordinates, click on OK. All right, and now checkpoint 11 is on the map. You can see it right here. And if you ever need to know where uh, one of these items is on your map, let's say you're on this, off the screen or whatever, you can just click on it, click on Find, and that will take you to that location. OK, now you might be placing, let's say, a series of checkpoints, and you want them to all look a certain way and maybe even be symbolized a certain way. So you can do that by going to the File menu, go to Preferences, 
and go to markers. Right now, every time I click to place a point, it's showing a green triangle. So let's say I want to do something else. Go to markers, change my default symbol, and let's just do something like this. Instead of green, we'll make it orange. you can even rotate it. Okay. And finally, on the text up here, it's set to CP. So everything is going to start with CP, CP0, CP1, and so on. So you can put, you know, whatever you want here. I'm going to spell out. Um, so we'll do like TA for transition area. I'm going to reset numbering. That's going to start it over at zero. You saw my checkpoints were up to like CP11. Says, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Okay, we'll click close. And now, every time I click to place a, a marker, it's going to do the TA, TA0, TA1, TA2, and so on. So if you're going to place a lot of different points and want them symbolized similarly and to have similar names, you can do that without going to a lot of pro uh, bother of going in and modifying each and every one. All right. Um, let's see. Going to take a look at questions, and if you have any others, be sure and type them in there. Uh, the question is, can you bulk load coordinates from a spreadsheet to get multiple checkpoints without hand entering? Um, I believe that is possible. Ed, can you jump on here just a moment and um, talk about that? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, Kevin, yeah, the idea is in Terrain Navigator Pro, um, you do have the ability to import uh, markers. You can go to the File menu, and Doug can kind of go through this with me. If you, Doug goes, clicks File, yep, and then Import, and then choose Markers. You'll see that there's a whole variety of formats that are supported. Uh, for uh, all of that stuff, uh, including uh, comma-separated value files. So if you have a spreadsheet that's, uh, you know, not a particular, um, you know, it, uh, for formatted towards GPX or KML or something like that, it will even bring them in from an unformatted file. Um, so all those features are right there. Um, it's kind of an advanced feature, so if you have any particular questions about that, feel free to drop us a line. Um, I see some other questions here, Doug, if, if you want to tackle them. Yep, sure. Um, yeah, there's a question about the um, entering UTM coordinates. And yeah, to do UTM coordinates, you just change your coordinate system by going to File, Preferences, Coordinate, and change your format here to UTM. Make sure your datum is set on whatever you want it to be. Click on Close. You'll notice my coordinates now are showing UTM. And when I want to enter UTM coordinates, I just go to the Edit Markers page, click on New, and there's the coordinates you can enter. So zone number and then your coordinates, and there you go. OK, we'll move on from markers now and take a look at layer types before we go on to uh, other overlays you might want to do. So Terrain Navigator Pro has a number of different map layers we're on the topo map right now, which you'll probably want. Most adventure racers are going to do topo maps. But for setting up your map, you may want to do something different. And you'll change that right here. You can change it to, let's say, aerial orthophoto, which could come in handy if you're, let's say, I don't know, you want to put a checkpoint at a certain location and want to make sure it's just lined up with its fence corner or something like that. You can do that, zoom in on it, you know, make sure it's right where you want it to be. And of course, as you switch between the different layers and layer types, all of your checkpoints and overlays and lines are, are going to be there too. <clears throat> we also have the option under, <clears throat> excuse me, topographic maps, switch back to topo map and select merge, do the aerial orthophoto. This is going to show you a hybrid type map similar to what we do on the MyTopo printed map side. So this could come in handy just for setting up your map. <laughs> Terrain Navigator Pro has a lot of different options, and not all of them are useful for adventure racing, but many of them may be. So I just want to show you that one. All right, we'll just switch back to the no merge regular topo map. 
and we'll continue on and look at um, drawing routes. <clears throat> so a route is going to be essentially a line connected by a series of waypoints. And to do that, you just select the route tool right here. And, oops, sorry, route tool is right here. And you click to start drawing your route. So click to start it, click on each point that you want to have on your route. And it creates a line to connect those. Once you're done, you can either click finish over here or right click and go to finish route. All right, and there's your route. You can make basic modifications to the route by moving your mouse cursor over each of these points. So let's say my waypoint here was not quite in the correct location. I'll click it and drag it over here. Or if I want to add to the route and have uh, just a little um, addition to my route, I just click on any point on the route and that creates a new vertex there. And then I can pull those and extend them out where I want it to go. And if I have a point on the route I don't want to have it there anymore, I can just right click on it. Go to delete waypoint, confirm. And it just removes it from the route. It keeps the rest of the route. Once you have your route drawn, you can right click on it, go into information. It's going to show you some nice information like the, uh, the route length. It's about 1.5 miles. And there's other information here you can take a look at. But if you go to the profile button at the bottom of the screen, it shows you a nice elevation profile along that route. So this could come in handy if you want to even draw out your entire adventure racing route, do an elevation profile. You can do that. You can select different points along the route, and it will show you exactly where that's at on the map. OK. Once you have your route created, you can right click on it, go to Edit Route to change the symbols on it if you want to do that. If you don't like how it shows all these waypoint names along here, just uncheck Display Waypoint Names. If you want a different symbol for your waypoints, you can do that. Let's try something solid. Or if you don't want the waypoint symbols at all, just uncheck that. That's just going to show you a line now. And you'll probably want to change your line from just something black and boring. So click on Options under Line. And you have a wide variety of choices here. So your line style, you can select Solid or do a dashed. We'll try a, a dashed line like this. You can do a little bit wider line. And you'll notice as you change it down here, it shows you what your final line is going to look like. Try we'll try a nice red dashed line. You can do a highlighter type effect if you want to do that. Just turn that off for now. OK, looks good. I'll click OK. And now my line is symbolized like that. So um, using lines, you can, or uh, routes, I should say, you can create all types of line features. It could come in handy for if there are new trails along the course that don't show up on our maps, or new roads, or anything else that you might want to symbolize using a line, you can do that. All right. And the final two tools I'm going to take a look at are polygons and labels. So we'll start with a polygon. A lot of times you might want to mark out a part of your course that's you know, off limits, out of bounds, something to that effect. And to do that, you can use the polygon. So I select my polygon tool, click on each point where I want to um, have a vertex. And as I draw, it's going to start filling in that polygon. OK, so there we go. I can click on Finish up here. All right, and you can modify each of these vertices if you want. But uh, you probably want to change the symbols, the symbology on the polygon. So just right click, go to Edit Polygon. And I can change my fill area. Right now it's blue. I can change that color to, let's say, a red. And the pattern here, you can change this to something uh, hashed or hatched or something like that. OK, there's a nice red hatched look. So 
So lots of options here. You can change your um, outline as well. Um, but yeah, this comes in handy for showing like out of bounds areas. So to go along with that, um, we'll show a little label and how you can use that. So here's the label tool as a little A in a box. All I do is click on the map somewhere. It creates the label. I click on here, I can change it. And we'll just say limits. Okay. I can also right click on this. Right click on it, go to label and edit label. And now I can modify different parts of it. So the color, we'll change this to red. Font, you can change to a different font type, make it bold, change the font size. Looks good. You can change it to a square border or a rounded border or no border if you would prefer. I'll go ahead and leave a square border on here. And you can do a background if you want some other background besides white. Lots of options here. So I'll click on close since I'm done here. Now the box is not quite the size and shape that I want. So I just drag these corners around the edge, the uh, edge boxes, make it how I want. That looks good. And then to move it, I can click in the center here and move it to the correct location. Okay, so there's my label and my polygon area. If you have any questions about some of these tools, now's a good time to put them into our chat window. Um, but by, by using all these things, you can really create a detailed, uh, nice custom map. I've just been working on this for you know 15 minutes and have put a lot of different things on here. You spend some time just uh, modify each of your lines and points to get the right symbol that you want. You can come up with a really sharp looking map. Um, let's see. I do have a question about, uh, it says the scale shown are not 1 to 24,000 or 1 to 50,000, the scale up here. Um, this scale is more for uh, screen display, and it's kind of displaying at an optimal level. When we go to export it, um, we'll be doing 1 to 24,000, so more of a standard scale. <clears throat> so all of our maps will be true, true to scale when you go to export them. And that's definitely something that we're <clears throat> concerned about. And we know that you want uh, when you print a nice MyTopo map. Um, let's see. Doug, if I could just jump in on that particular yes. question. Is yes. that, yeah, just to reiterate that the, the scale on the screen, um, you know, actually means nothing because the scale on the screen is a reflection of, uh, of the pixels per inch uh, of, your display and without having to optimize for every particular monitor and every particular screen resolution, all that, it would be impossible to actually produce an accurate scale on a, um, a computer monitor. But when you go to print, scale is incredibly important. And when Doug goes to do that, you'll see that um, uh, you know, you'll be able to you know, put in you know the standard scales that you want. That all having been said, if it makes you feel better, you can go up to the top and you can type in any scale you want. And uh, so it will now do its best to represent the map at that scale, uh, assuming a 96 DPI monitor and a bunch of other you know, variables that you know, it, it, uh, apply uh, for, for map scaling. And you'll also notice you'll get a performance hit because when you scroll around, Terrain Navigator Pro has to do a little bit more math as far as uh, how to how to scale the map to that particular scale. So in general, when you're uh, looking at the map scales uh, at the top, you, you stick to the default scales. Uh, but then when you go to print or export, then you want to uh, be uh, you know put in whatever scale you want. And that's probably more than you ever ever wanted to know about scales in Terrain Navigator Pro. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ed. And I saw one more question come across. If you want to highlight a road or route you have stored in GPX, can you import that, import it in that form? And you can do that. Um, let me just show you real quick how you would do that. Just go under File, Import. And in this case, I have a route in GPX format that I want to import. So I'll go to Import Routes. And we're in the GPX Exchange format.
and I have a GPX file that I've had pre-created. I'll click on open. Okay, it says loaded one route from GPX file. If I go under my layers menu and go to routes, I believe it's shown here as route 10, so I'll click on that. It's not on this screen, but I can click on it. Click on uh, find start. And there it is. It's brought that GPX file in as a route. And then I can set it up and symbolize it the way that I want. So yes, you can import GPX files. There are a lot of different options for that, um, which I don't really have the time to go over today. But that's kind of the basic way to do that. And it definitely is possible to bring in any GPX files that you have and take a look at those. And while you're on the subject of uh, GPS and garments and all that stuff, back to Bruce's original question, um, GPX, uh, GPS support can be done directly through the GPS menu, but uh, it's also easier, it can be easier just to deal with the GPX files if you're familiar how to do with all that and either import or export under the file menu. For example, if you wanted to load uh, things into the Garmin, you could do file, export, route, and then select your route and then save a GPX file um, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but if you wanted to do direct connection, that's all there under the GPS menu. Um, and that would uh, allow you to do uh, you know, all the fancy stuff. Uh, again, kind of beyond the scope of this uh, webinar. Uh, I, th I believe there's webinars that have covered this in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe there is one that's, that talks about GPSs, but Yes, all this stuff is possible. We're not going to go into detail on all of it today, but the software is really powerful and will do pretty much anything that you would want to do on it. OK, so now you have your map set up. Might take you a while. I would uh, encourage you to just you know take some time to get to know Terrain Navigator Pro. But once you do, you can get your map layout set up just the way that you want, or I should say your map overlay set up the way you want. And then what you'll want to do is export the map or print it. And the way that Terrain Navigator Pro deals with that is under the File menu and Print Publish Map. This is where you will go to both export or both uh, print the map on your local printer if you want to do that, or export it to a PDF for us to print at MyTopo. So from this menu, there are two distinct actions you can do. One is the print, like I said, to your local printer, and the other is export to a file. And you want to select to choose which one you're going to do and then choose a preview type. So if you want to print, you would go to print preview. I'm going to show you how to export, so we'll switch to export preview. OK, the next thing that you want to do is change to this printer file tab, because this is where you'll set up how you want to export. So it says, uh, don't worry about this. This is for if you're printing. You want to export an image layout. So you can save as type, JPEG, TIFF, PDF. If you want to send it to my topo, it's going to be a PDF file. OK. My width right now is just set to 11 inches, like a standard page size. So what I want to do is do a standard my topo print size. Our print sizes are 18 by 24 inches is small, 24 by 36 inches is medium, and 36 by 48 inches large. So if you're going to have us print the map at MyTopo, you'll want to set it to one of those standard sizes. And you can contact us for more guidance or look on our website if you want to know, uh, you know for sure how to set those up. But it's just 2 by 3 feet and 3 by 4 feet are the most common sizes. So we'll do a 36-inch uh, wide print and 24 inches tall. OK, so now we've got a three foot by two foot layout. Your DPI is going to affect the image width down here. And sometimes if the DPI gets too large, and especially with really large paper sizes, that can cause problems depending on your system. So you might want to start it just a little low, maybe like 200. And you can ramp it up later if you want to try that. But we'll just, we'll just do 200. OK, so I'll switch back to the Properties tab. And this is the place where you will set up the map layout. You'll, show, you'll have different elements on the left side here that are represented on the map. And the main one is the map itself, the map frame. And I can click and drag this map frame around. 
So it covers the area that I want for the map. And you'll notice here my scale is set to 1 to 24,000. So if you want the original topo scale, that's what you want. You can do different sizes if you want to cover more or less area on this map frame. It just depends on how you race the setup and if you're doing uh, the standard 1 to 24,000 or not. Okay, I can click on these little blocks on the edge of the map frame, drag those out. This map frame is showing little uh, gray dashed lines here. These are kind of the safe print or margins areas, so we'll drag it out to about there. I can change different things about the style here. So instead of a double line around the edge, I can do a single line on the map frame. And print layers is selected. Layers are the overlays that we put on there. So if I uncheck that, all the overlays go away. Probably want to have those checked on. You can change the relative sizing of the map. So you can drag this little slider bar to make your um, symbols larger or smaller. Now this map is three feet wide and so these are probably a little bit large for that. In general, you want to keep it right in the middle. But if you find out that your symbols are too large or too small, you can use a slider to, to um, make everything larger or smaller instead of going in individually. So it's pretty handy for that. Okay, so once we have our map frame set up, there are different elements we can work on. So the scale bar is set up right now. I can select scale. And as I select the map block over here, it selects it on the map and shows me options here. So in this case, we have feet. Let's also do uh, some miles and stick kilometers on there as well. And I'll change this style to no frame around the edge. And I can change the size of this and the location on the map. That's good for now. As I add different map elements, I might move them around. That's fine. I just want to get them on there. OK, we probably want something else on the map. So to do that under blocks here, click on this and select what type of block you want to add. So let's add a title to the map. I'll add a text block. So I type the name of the title. Okay, and it puts it in the block here. It's very small right now. So we'll change the size to a much larger font size. Let's do 36. And you can change the font type here if you would like. We'll move it down here. Change the style to no frame. And bring it out large enough so it actually fits on the screen. Okay, that looks good for my title. Let's say I want a subtitle. You can add a second text block. And they'll all be represented here on the, under the page blocks. We'll do 24 hour race 2020. Okay, I can move it down here into position. Make sure the block is large enough. Okay, that looks good for now. Something else you might want to add to the map is logos. A lot of you have your own adventure racing logos and like to put those on your map. And if you're printing the map through MyTopo, you'll need the MyTopo logo as well. So I'll show you how to do those. Insert a block under Artwork. And click on where it says Choose Picture to Insert. Okay, we'll stick the MyTopo logo. And we can put it on the map here. And let's add a second artwork. If you have your custom logo, add it to the map and size it and position it how you want it. OK, looking good. All right, some other things you might want on your map is a north arrow or a compass. So add the compass option. And we have a wide variety of different um, compass styles. In most cases, you might want to do like USGS with magnetic grid declination or 
uh, UTM, grid declination, or both, depending on how your, your race is set up and what kind of coordinates you're using. Okay, and you want to resize this. All right, those are looking good. So those are the main map elements. You can set them up on your screen, on your uh, map the way that you want them. Let me just show you a few more briefly. You can add a legend. And what you want to do on a legend is put a check in this box where you include the entire project. You're going to automatically generate the legend. And all the symbols that we have on the map are going to show up here. Now, some you may want on the legend, some you may not. I'll go ahead and remove this one. The ones you have on there, you can edit those. Let's say our checkpoints are symbolized this way. So I can type checkpoint, load closed, so the A transition area. This will be a trail. You can set up a nice legend this way. And you can see that on your map sheet, as I change things here, the legend is also shown here. Okay, lots of customization options. I won't go into right now, but um, that's how you set up a legend. And finally, let me just show you an elevation profile. You should happen to be interested in this. We looked at elevation profiles earlier. Um, uh, let's see. There we go. Okay. So you can set up your elevation profile, color it how you want, and put that on the map if you should be interested in that. All right. So altogether, you'll create all, all these elements, get a really pretty looking map just the way that you want it. Uh, before you export the map, one other thing I want to show you is under the templates tab here, you can save this map layout, not necessarily like the map location, but the layout of all these elements into something called a template. So switch to the template tab, type the name of your template, and click on save. And that will save it into there. That way, when you close out of here and come back in, or let's say you want a second map that has all the elements the same but a different location, you can use your template. OK, we have everything set up the way that we want. This is set up to the proper size in PDF. So now I can just click on the export. And this will export it as a PDF. While it's exporting, I just want to make note of one thing. Um, so let's see here. Let me bring this over. Occasionally, you'll have trouble with exporting PDFs. And that's usually due to system issues, uh, whether it's your terrain navigator is out of date or graphics card issues or something like that. Uh, we have seen this come across occasionally, where your map covers the full layout on Terrain Navigator Pro, but when you bring up your PDF, it's only partial. And we have a really nice document that tells different issues that you might have uh, with PDFs. It's on our knowledge base. It's called Fixing Issues with PDF Map Pages. So if you do happen to have issues with that, take a look at this and just see if anything here fixes your issue. Hopefully, your PDF will come out completely fine. But uh, if not, you might want to take a look at that. OK, so now back in Terrain Navigator Pro, my export is finished. Here's the PDF file. I'll open it up. And there we are. So that's a nice 2 foot by 3 foot PDF. You can email that to us at MyTopo when you're ready for your adventure race. And in some cases, the file size might get a little large. So if it doesn't come through, just contact us. And we can come up with uh, you know different ways of you getting the map to us. Um, all right, let me take a look at any other questions that you have. This is kind of the basic overview of how you would create a map in Terrain Navigator Pro and how, um, how you'd send it to us at MyTopo. Um, let's see. OK, yeah, go ahead, Paige. 
Yeah, I was going to say for Kevin's question, um, there's a whole webinar on polygons, and you can you can carve out holes in the middle of polygons. And so I just direct you to that to that webinar. There's a YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube.com and type in Terrain Navigator, it'll bring you to all of our our webinars. And the the webinar on on polygons will help you. Okay, great. Um, see, there's a question about, are you able to enter details in the margin, such as declination and any other note? Um, possibly the best way to do declination would just be to do the north arrow, like I did with declination. Um, has a few details there. Um, I think there is a way to do that um, under summary. Yeah, I mean, there are options here. So you have a magnetic declination option. This little summary uh, tab is going to show you, let me make the text size larger here. It's Terrain Navigator Pro, so everything is customizable. <laughs> um, but you can show different things on there, like what's a magnetic declination, what's the scale here, and so on. And all these are available just based on what you put here. So that's a summary page block. So yes, that is an option. Uh, if I could just jump in, yeah, the, the, the summary page block and the text page block, they have um, uh, fields that ca can be imported into them uh, and selected in those blocks so that you can you know, create all kinds of fun, um, you know, annotations and automatic things, you know, displaying the declination, the map center, all kinds of, you know, scales you know it's all it's all in there um you know there, it's it's just a matter of uh like like you said playing with them um you can put in a put these in mix them into a regular text block as well so you could have you you know you put in your text that you want it to say and then have it calculate the value of the declination and that sort of thing uh there was another question that i, I don't want to see get missed which was uh uh, Bruce's question, assume orientation can be set to true north, mag north, et cetera. When Terrain Navigator Pro uh, generates a map uh, for printing or publishing, it is always north up. Uh, so, and it is always uh, going to be oriented uh, according to that uh, orientation. There's no rotate uh, option at this time in, in Terrain Navigator Pro. Uh, but it will be oriented to true north. Um, and that's the same as would be if you had printed it on the MyTopa website. <clears throat> yep. Um, Tim and Outdoor have additional questions. Um, do you want to take them or, Doug? Um, take a look. LiDAR data. Um, are you familiar with anybody using that? Ed? Um, the Terrain Navigator Pro will import GeoTIFFs. Uh, so if you were to take the raw LiDAR data into a GIS application, format it into a GeoTIFF, and then import it into Terrain Navigator Pro, yes. If uh, that makes sense to you, great. If that doesn't make sense to you, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Tim asked about uh, mobile apps. Yeah, the Train Navigator Pro mobile app will display the project and uh, allow you to navigate it on it, just like a GPS. Again, I refer to our other webinars on that topic. Yeah, and that's really handy for, I can imagine, once you set up your adventure race, you can transfer it to your mobile device, have it out there in the field while you're setting things up or previewing or whatever. And you can also do small prints out of Terrain Navigator Pro for taking out in the field to, to set things up. So, and Doug, just before you, I, I want to make sure you don't don't forget. Okay, you've generated, you've created this beautiful map um, layout here. How do you save it so you can use it again? The template, you mean? Yes. Um, I think I briefly went over that. So okay. you go to the templates tab here, and you can type in the name of the template that you want to have. And click on save, and. To bring that up again, let me close out of here. I'll go back to print publish map. Okay, when I go to export preview again, it's just gonna take me to my generic uh, page here template. 
but I can go here back to my template that I saved, click on load, and there it is. And the nice thing about this is that regardless of where your map location is at, it's going to bring all these elements up. It'll just use your current map location. So that would be useful if you had a race over multiple days or over multiple maps. You could create one template and then just drag it around to, to set and off the, make off the PDFs that you need. Yep, definitely. Okay. Any more questions or anything we need to cover? Uh, there is one more question from Tim about Mac support. Terrain Navigator Pro works great on a Mac using Parallels, um, and that is the way it's going to stay. Uh, there, there's no immediate plans or even long-range plans to make a Mac native application of Terrain Navigator Pro. If anything, it would become a web-based application um, that is, uh, you know, purely runs on any browser. But uh, there's no, there's no, there's not going to be a Mac version of Terrain Navigator Pro. Mm -hmm. And if you are using Terrain Navigator Pro and you have any questions about it, like I mentioned earlier, I would recommend the help system. It's very extensive. But you can also email us, tnpsupport at tremble.com, and ask any technical questions there. So, and then uh, if you want to order a MyTopo map or have your map set up and you want to get in touch with us that way, you can email us at support at mytopo.com for the actual map printing portion. Yep. And if you look in the comments box or the chat box, Paige has put in those email addresses so you have those handy. Okay, Paige, was there anything else that you wanted to add? No, I, th I thank everybody for joining us. If you've got questions on pricing, Terrain Navigator Pro is $240 a year per state uh, per user. Um, we do offer, uh, we do have a seven day free trial. And if you've just got one event, you may be able to use that seven day free trial to, to accomplish it. Um, we also, if you're gonna order your maps through my topo and you're gonna put a big bulk order in, we're, we're uh, usually happy to provide you access to Terrain Navigator Pro in order for you to create your maps if you're gonna come through my topo to print them. Um, we, uh, we also um, have great discounts for bulk orders. So we don't, we, if you're gonna be doing a race map and, and uh, need us to print you 20, 30, 40, 50 maps, uh, be sure to ask about our bulk discount uh, pricing so we can make that a reasonable, usually it's better to come through us than it is to go to a local print shop because we're, our pricing's gonna, once we do the bulk pricing, we're gonna be better. Um, and we print them on the great waterproof paper with UV fade resistant waterproof inks. Um, so I think that covers it. If there's any, uh, somebody is asking about provincial maps for Canada, um, Bruce, we do have, my topo does allow you to make maps for Canada. Uh, Terrain Navigator Pro does not cover Canada. So you would need to just be able to order your, your maps from, from, uh, my topo. And, you know, just for, just for, uh, to let you know, if you don't want to fool with software, colored sharpies work great on water on our waterproof paper and they maintain the waterproofness so um you can always uh, you, you can always take the easy way out and and make a good make a good annotated map with color sharpies um rich has a question can maps already in my topo import to tnp um so maybe ed you should address that uh, well, a map, once you've created it on the MyTopo website, this, it's really just a, uh, a digital file of uh, uh, effectively another PDF. Um, so there's no real easy way to go from that back into TNP. Um, so the, the short answer is no. The, the complicated answer is if you had our sites add-on and you could do a geo-reference and you could do a bunch of other stuff, uh, but uh, it's, it's not, it's not going to be easy. But I'll add to that, the, the data is the same. So um, you could easily recreate it because um, you're, you're still using the one to 24,000, seven and a half minute USGS maps. Um, so that would be that would be the way to go probably. Are there additional maps, additional steps to send this map to the mobile application for the start stop line to project? Um, anybody want to take that? So uh, in other words, uh, yeah. On the mobile app there, uh, again, you want to uh, you just refer to the various webinars on that. But uh, 
the mobile app, you have a, uh, you, you load the project just like you would in Terrain Navigator Pro on the desktop. And then it appears more or less the same. And uh, there's a, just like the GPS has a go-to button uh, for the uh, Terrain Navigator Pro and it allows you to navigate to that location. So it's it's uh, you know it's 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 very much like using a handheld GPS. It's it's modeled on the same same idea. Okay. All right, we are approaching um, one hour, so that's great. Thanks, Doug, for for uh, getting us through a lot of material in a in a short amount of time. And if anybody has any additional questions, we're here. We're happy to answer them. Emails best. We get we return our emails. Uh, super fast around here, sometimes faster than phone calls. So feel free to email us and uh, thank you everybody for participating. We will get this posted up to our YouTube site and um, are happy for you guys to share it with other people and uh, get the word out that this is a great way to make navigation uh, related uh, event, uh, maps for navigation related events. Thanks everyone. Yep, thank you.